One of the most immediate and controversial changes to school safety after the deadly high school shooting in Parkland was the adoption of Florida's school guardian program. It lets schools hire armed guards or allow staff members, including teachers, be armed while on campus. Five years after this program began, Florida 24 investigator Kayla Legrone is bringing us an impact check, examining if school guardians are making a difference in keeping students safe from gun violence on campus. <laughs> Accident waiting to happen. It's a controversial school safety measure born out of tragedy. I think it's a good idea. Keep everybody safe. But five years after armed school guardians became part of Florida's school security landscape, we wanted to know. Is it working? Absolutely. Does it work? Yes. How do you feel the school guardian program is working in our state? How many mass casualty active assailant events have we had on a school in Florida since Stoneman Douglas? None. Pinellas County Sheriff Bob Gualtieri, Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd, and Hillsborough County School Police Chief John Newman are big supporters of the Coach Aaron Feiss School Guardian Program. Named after one of the victims from the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shooting in 2018, the program gives Florida school districts the option to hire less costly armed guards instead of law enforcement for their schools. School staff members, including teachers, included. We need more of them. For Gualtieri, who also leads the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Public Safety Commission, school guardians are a no-brainer. If we don't have that armed person with a gun on these campuses, then we're being irresponsible and we're not being honest and we're leaving a campus vulnerable. Why would we do that? Today, guardians are being used in more than half of Florida school districts. Hillsborough County has 385 stationed at elementary and charter schools. The genius in the Guardian program is whether you're a real small county or an extra large county like Hillsborough County, you can take the definition and apply it to your resources, to your finances, and really implement something that works for your district. But while these law enforcement leaders are quick to tout the program a success, we discovered measuring its impact is based on information that doesn't exist or is kept completely out of the public eye. How do you measure the success of whether guardians are working on campus. You can't really absent a bad event, um, period. Number one, have we had an active assailant? No. Number two, is there a level of comfort with the parents? Absolutely. You're trying to measure an intangible, and so that is uh, sometimes hard to do. But when you look at it over a period of time, and over five years, we haven't had any major events. So what we're doing is working. We can't define school safety in the negative. A school is safe because we haven't had a shooting. Ken Trump is an Ohio-based school security expert who explains measuring the impact of school guardians or any school safe officer on campus boils down to data, which he says is limited. There's very little, if any, evaluation on school guardian programs. And here in Florida, what is available is largely kept secret. Let me explain. Since the Parkland shooting, Florida required school districts notify them whenever a safe school officer, including a school guardian, misbehaves or fires their gun outside of training. Since 2020, about 100 of these reports have been filed. But exactly why, we don't know, because the state refuses to release to us any records. Telling us discipline records on safe school officers, including guardians, are part of security plans, which are confidential and exempt from public disclosure. I see no reason why why uh, that information can't be disclosed or shouldn't be disclosed. So we asked school districts. Most also refused to release any details, some even telling us the state told them not to. But of the few who did, details show school guardians haven't come without some problems. In Hillsborough County, since it started using guardians in 2019, about a half dozen have been written up. One was fired after being charged with sexual battery on a student. Two more for leaving campus during their shifts. Citrus and Lake schools had guardians who accidentally fired their guns or left them unattended attended. Still, statewide, problem guardians represent a small fraction of the more than 4,000 safe school officers patrolling Florida schools. We can't say that school guardian programs are not working. We can't say that they are working perfectly or overall working well because we don't have full data. The only measurement of success for this program is the absence 
of an event. Well, you know, that's the way you're characterizing it. And I'm not saying that's yeah. right or wrong. I'm yeah. just saying that's the only information. Well, but say what we other have, information? Right? What, but what other information do you want? What other information do you need? You know, you, uh, and to a degree, I think you're looking for something that can't exist. While state data shows the number of gun related incidents on school campuses is actually down since the Parkland shooting, Sheriff Gualtieri says those numbers can't be trusted because of all sorts of reporting issues. Still, state leaders maintain the school guardian program is a success in our state. In fact, they want to expand the program. I'm Katie Legrone for the Florida 24 Network.